Hi everyone. Teach My Child is dedicated to helping children maximize their potential. Today's video is about the eight factors to consider when choosing an extracurricular activity for your child. Do you want your child to grow up well-rounded? Does she have a club or a sport? Is she involved in community service? One way we try to ensure that our kids have a holistic growth is by encouraging them to engage in extracurriculars. But not all extracurricular activities are equal. The skills they build and the time and resources they require all vary. How then do you choose the best activities for your child? 1. Desired Benefits Extracurriculars contribute to students' academic achievements, character and social development, and community involvement. Students who dabble in extracurricular activities tend to have higher grades, especially in math, science, and literacy, more positive educational experiences, and a college degree. Those who take part in organized activities learn to follow instructions. They also develop persistence, motivation, goal setting, and problem solving. Students involved in extracurriculars can also learn self-concept and self-worth, develop personal interests, and discover their strengths and weaknesses. They know that they have many things to accomplish, in a much shorter amount of time. So they learn to prioritize and work more efficiently. Being part of a team, and having a common goal, also push them to hone leadership skills. Talking to seniors and coaches also teaches them how to accept constructive criticism. Collaboration in extracurricular activities, fosters teamwork and communication skills, a greater sense of belonging, and stronger connections, with people who have the same interests and goals. All of these promote social development, and enable students to succeed in school. There are also positive groups that encourage students to avoid negative life choices, and to find mentors and other supportive adults. School is just a tiny environment, compared to the real world. Participating in extracurricular activities, connects children with their community, and teaches them to give back. Adolescents who engage in community work, also tend to continue volunteering after high school, and develop a sense of belonging to the community. In turn, this motivates them to be contributing members of society. 2. Your child's interest. Depending on your child's school schedule and workload, she may already have too much on her plate to even think about extracurriculars. Many schools require a child to enlist in one or more sponsored clubs. Much better if they start their own. High schools and colleges also tend to look more favorably at the applications of students with diverse student experience and skills, particularly those with leadership experience and genuine community involvement. The pressure on your child may already be overwhelming. To avoid stressing your child any further, you may want to let her choose which extracurricular to engage in. This way, she can enjoy doing the activity. A trial class can help her determine whether an activity is the right fit. 3. Budget Many extracurricular activities can cost a lot to engage in. Aside from the training fees, sports activities may require you to pay for uniforms and gears, such as basketball uniforms and shoes, badminton or tennis racket, gloves and a hitting pad, or golf clubs. There's also the cost of specialized training camps. Music classes may also cost a lot, depending on the brand and quality of the musical instruments you need to purchase, and the maintenance and repair fees. Pursuing an expensive, extracurricular activity may force you to feed your family cheap, unhealthy food. You may be fine with that, so long as your child is happy. But you also need to think about the impact of poor nutrition on the long-term health of your child. In the long run, you'd have to reconsider if the activity is worth it, especially if the total expenses prevent you from saving for your family's future, such as your child's college education and your retirement. 4. Bankability If your child is naturally talented in sports or the arts, she may be able to use this talent to get admitted into a desired university or a lucrative career. Then by all means, support that activity. Some colleges and universities accept students who demonstrate excellent athletic abilities without passing the standard admission test. The University of the Philippines, through the Varsity Athletic Admission System, recruits exemplary athletes, Filipiniana dancers, and pep squad members to represent the university in national and international sports competitions. 
This system accepts applicants who either did not take the UP college admission test or failed it. Aspiring scholars may also gain admission into the UP College of Fine Arts or the College of Music through the talent determination system. However, those who would like a bachelor's degree in music also need to pass the college admission test. Getting a scholarship from a top university and therefore not having to spend a fortune on college tuition fees is an excellent return on investment. It can also serve as fallback just in case your child is unable to get in through the standard admission test. Landing a coveted career in the field is the icing on the cake. The professional athletes that obtain prestigious university scholarships include Bill Bradley, Princeton alumnus and Rhodes scholar, Russell Westbrook, UCLA and Gordon Hayward, Butler in basketball, and Myron Rawl, FSU, as well as Byron White and Pat Hayden, both Oxford alumni and Rhodes scholars in football. At some point in their life, they were professional athletes with hefty salaries before pursuing their medical, political, and other aspirations where they excelled even more. 5. Teacher's recommendation. Your child's teacher might see her potential in a particular endeavor, for instance, music, or find the need for her to enroll in a supplementary learning program to enhance her skills in a certain subject. Great if your child is fine to enroll in that program. But what if your child is just not interested? You can encourage her to sign up for and stick with that activity by having a friend that's also enrolled in that program, letting her engage in her preferred activity as a reward for doing the recommended one, and highlighting the benefits of doing that activity and the reasons why quitting is not an option. You can also find any underlying issues. Listen to your child when she says that she does not like the activity. Chances are. You may also have to read between the lines. Shoshana Dayanim, a developmental psychologist, suggests that your child may be trying to say, "The instructor is going too fast for me. The coach won't let me play as much as I want to. Somebody on the team is bothering me. I'm afraid to take part in a recital. The activity is too hard for me. I don't like to practice." Once you find the underlying problem, why your child wants to quit. You can try to resolve it by talking to the instructor or coach. Alternatively, you may choose not to intervene and use this opportunity to build your child's grit and conflict resolution skills. 6. Accessibility and travel time. A study revealed that transport does affect the accessibility of extracurricular activities for high school students in Zagreb, Croatia. Some students, especially those living in the peripheral areas of Zagreb, could not participate in any extracurricular activity due to transport. While not all of us live in Zagreb, what you can take away from this study is the link between transport and the extracurricular activity. If it is difficult, if not impossible, for you to bring your child to her activity, perhaps because there are no available modes of public transportation to get to the activity, then it may not be a good choice for you. Also, even if you have a car, you would need to calculate how much time it would take for you to travel to the activity. Can you manage being stuck in traffic for 2 hours every time you need to go there? How easy is it to find parking? Traveling and finding a parking space both take time away from other more urgent tasks such as homework. 7. Time constraints. Can your child comfortably finish all her school work and still excel in her extracurriculars? Some extracurriculars, such as basketball, cheerleading, and training for inter-school math and science competitions, are extremely time-consuming. Practices and drills can take at least two hours every weekday, and sometimes even a whole Saturday. Besides, it's not only your child's time that you have to factor in. Do you have the time to bring your child from school to her extracurricular classes, and thereafter pick her up? Or can you manage to pick your child up from school in the late afternoons every single day? Some parents, for instance, do not have the luxury of time to fetch their kids from varsity practices, so some can only take part in time-consuming extracurricular activities when they can already manage to go to and from these activities on their own. Eight, commitment requirement. Does the activity run for only a few weeks to a season, or does it require more commitment? There are workshops and camps such as writing, speed reading, basketball, swimming, theater arts, dancing, personality development, gardening, and DIY or crafts that run for a few sessions.
to a month or two, especially during the summer breaks. On the other hand, there are also extracurriculars that your child can start in the summer, and continue for years. These are activities that require serious commitment from both the child and the parents, even though fees are paid on a monthly or seasonal basis. These are the ones that don't just develop your child's skills in a particular subject matter. They also build character, such as discipline and grit, and life skills, particularly time management. It is crucial to know which activities are only good to take during summer breaks, and which ones are worth investing in, in the long run. Remember, as Viswanathan Anand, Indian chess grandmaster said, Parents, first and foremost, it is important to understand and recognize the activities your child is naturally gravitating towards. It's important also to ensure that your child likes what he or she is doing. I believe in exposing children to as many hobbies and extracurricular activities as possible. Your child may already be excelling in one or more extracurriculars. Well done! It may be time to focus on building other strengths, or overcoming weaknesses. It's also possible that your child is getting exhausted, from doing too many activities, while having to fulfill her school responsibilities, in which case, you might need to consider dropping some activities, that have already fulfilled their purpose. Some extracurricular activities also cost a lot of money. Participating in one too many activities, may cause too much financial strain and do more harm than good. Expectations may exceed the real score, and failure may lead to unbearable disappointment. Bottom line, look at all relevant factors, particularly your desired benefits, your child's interest, and the required resources, before deciding on which extracurricular activity, is best for your child. Sometimes, in our desire to help our child develop as many skills as possible, they are forced to do activities that they don't really like. They also miss out on rest and play. How many extracurricular activities is your child engaged in? Are you finding these activities worthwhile? Share with us your thoughts. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more ways on unleashing your child's potential. Like, hit that notification bell, and share this video and channel with others who also want what's best for their child.